The GTA 6 trailer has just launched and it has this really cool logo animation and that's what we're going to create today. As you can see it looks really similar and you can use these effects for other logo animations. Like always if you want to download this as a template you can do so in the description down below for a small fee and if you just want the assets for free you can do so in the description too. Now I'm in After Effects and I'll create a new composition. Let's make it 4k. First the text layer. So make sure that the text is selected and then we just type a VI. Of course center it align it, center it, and we'll make it way bigger. And then I'll center it again. I will first create all the elements and then we'll animate everything. This is gonna be our base. So let's duplicate this and call this base and we'll turn it off. Then this is gonna be our light ray and I'm gonna duplicate this and this will be the light ray mask. Turn that off and go to the light ray. First, we're gonna add a fractal noise and you will see why in a moment. I'm gonna add a four color gradient. Gradient, I'll find it like that. Four color gradient. Now put this above the fractal noise and then change the blending mode of the noise to multiply. And then the last effect that we'll add is the CC light burst. Then go to toggle switches modes and use the top as a mask. Now, of course, invert it and we'll have this really cool effect. Now, if you want to see what happens if we turn off the fractal noise, you'll see that the light rays are really smooth. Now, maybe you really like this effect, so you can go for this. But for now, I'm gonna keep the fractal noise on because it gives this like light ray pattern, which is so cool to see. Now, one thing you might've noticed is that the light burst is from a certain point. I'm gonna change the quality to quarter so you can upload updates quickly and you can put it in a certain spot. And this is a really cool effect too. You can animate this, but in this case, I wanna have the light burst come from basically two sides. So we'll put one in the bottom left and then I'm just gonna duplicate it and I'm gonna put it from the other side and this will create a light burst all around. Now you can also change the colors if you want to. You can change it to whatever you like and this will dramatically change the look of the whole composition or the whole effect. And we're now using text as a base layer but you can also do this with a basic shape or maybe with a logo. So we already have the beginning of our animation. Now the next part is that this will be filled. And I will teach you this and I will teach you this really cool stroke effect. So we're going to use the base layer again for this. Just go to layer, just right click on our base. We'll just duplicate this again and we'll call this the gradient fill. Turn it on and then we can just add a gradient ramp to this or the other way is to right click on the text, go to layer styles and go to gradient overlay. The nice thing about this gradient overlay is that we can really adjust the gradient and we can even add certain middle points. I'm going to click on reverse to turn it on, edit the gradient. And of course, this doesn't have to be perfect. You can even color pick it from the logo. And we can adjust this later, but for now, this is fine. Now select the base again, right click on it, create, create shapes from text. We have these outlines. I'm gonna call this stroke one. Make sure to turn off the fill by clicking on fill. Then duplicate it again and stroke two. Turn off the top one and we'll first do the first stroke. So when we open contents, you can add a gradient stroke. Now select the layer first and increase the stroke so you can see what we're doing. We have this really ugly gradient, but we can adjust that into the in the gradient stroke layer. We can just click on edit gradient. And for example, we can make it purple to maybe more of a dark purple, dark bluish. Okay, then you'll see the start point and end point. We also need to adjust that. Now you might see that nothing happens and that's because the gradient stroke needs to be inside of the contents because there's already a gradient stroke effect in this. So you can remove that and we can also go into the gradient stroke and then you'll see these two points and we can adjust where our stroke comes from and where it goes. Now you might've noticed that the stroke is on the outside. So basically aligned to the center. And I don't want that. I want to change the stroke to be on the inside. Now to create an inside, now to create an inside gradient, there's a trick. You can just add a offset paths. And what this does is it can make it on the inside. Now we're doing it like this. So we create these sharp edges because a inner shadow won't create that. It will create a round inner shadow. So this is perfect for the effect that we want. I do think the stroke is way too big. Also don't like the colors, but we can adjust that later on. 
So to change the stroke width, we can just make that, for example, to 23. I like that number. And then we change the amount to something like this. Now we're just busy with the V to copy this over to the Y. You can just select that so we can copy the gradient stroke. We open the Y and we delete this one. Make sure that I is selected and then paste it. And as you can see, the same gradient stroke is on this letter too. Now we actually duplicated this stroke before, but actually it's easier to now just delete that and duplicate this. And I'll show you why, because if we open this and we open the contents, and we go into the V, we open the gradient stroke and we're gonna adjust the colors. For example, the start color, we're gonna make in a different shade. Press okay. And the cool thing is if we now offset the path even more, maybe to something like 34, then you have this double stroke effect. Of course, we need to copy this over. So again, you can just select these effects both. So and the offset paths and the gradient stroke open the other letter and just remove the gradient stroke and select the letter and paste it. And there we go. The only thing I see is that the offset paths need to be adjusted a bit. And that's always uh, a bit of a thing. You just need to see what works for you. So we need to adjust it like that. And then we have the double stroke. Now I have the logo that we're recreating on the right. And as you can see, our colors are really off. We can always adjust that. For example, the gradient fill. I'll click on edit gradient. Let's select the first color, the middle color, and the, and the end color. That already looks better. Of course, we need the iconic palm trees too. So I have these really cool palm trees that are of course also downloadable in the description. I'm gonna scale those up. And as you can see, they're really pixelated, but when you go to toggle switches modes and we'll press this icon, then we'll see the high res version. If you want to, you can also mask one. Maybe that makes it a bit easier to see which one you're moving, something like this, by just grabbing the pen tool and then making a mask out of it. What the cool thing is, is that we can also press R for rotation and then we can even move it a bit to create some animation. Again, I just want to cover the letter and now you might ask how to cover it. Well, there's a couple ways to do this. If you're in the recent version in After Effects, you can even just use the track mat feature. In older versions, you need to duplicate the gradient fill, put this above the layer and then press the track mat to be the gradient fill. Now, of course, make sure that these two layers are under the two strokes that we created. And then one thing that we also need to do is press T for the transparency and decrease it by a lot. Maybe put it on something like 10, 15%. Now, same goes for the other letter. Maybe for lucky, there's even a palm tree here. Again, we can adjust this later on. Now for the animation, we're just gonna select all these layers on the top, press T for transparency and make sure that these are all on zero. You can then keyframe these layers to go in, making sure that the palm trees come in a bit later so you won't see that the stroke is over it. And of course, make sure that the palm trees stay to 20% or maybe lower. That's great. Now for the beginning animation, it's really easy, guys. There's just a mask that goes over it. If you want to, you can also create a whole black solid since the background is black anyway. For that, we just go to layer new solid, press OK. Then double click on the rectangle tool, press F for feather. I'm gonna increase this to maybe 300. We'll press P for position and then we'll move this down. Maybe increase the feather to even 400. Again, if we press P now for the position and we keyframe it and we keyframe it to the bottom so it's out of the screen, I'm gonna move the mask a bit down, something like that. And as you can see, we have this beautiful reveal. Then later on, our light rays go off and there's multiple ways to do this actually. If we go to effect controls, we can also decrease the ray length of both our light bursts and that will give a bit of an organic animation. Or what you can just do is go to T for transparency and again, keyframe the opacity out. In my opinion, both work fine. And of course, the last part is the Grand Theft Auto logo. The copyright goes to Grand Theft Auto, so make sure that if you use this, use this responsible. Now, what I saw is that it has a glow, so we can even duplicate this, go to the bottom layer and give the bottom layer a light burst bloop, and set the color. You can even change the color of the light burst to whatever you want. I'm going to decrease the ray length to something really low and then press T for transparency and turn it down a bit. Now we can animate the glow to go out after a while like that and select both layers. 
make sure that it starts here or maybe a bit to the front, something like that. Then go to layer, pre-compose, and then go to the rectangle tool, select a square. I'm gonna move it over a bit by pressing V, double clicking on the mask so you can move the mask. You can increase it a bit, something like that. And then we'll add a big feather, something like three or 400. And to get to this feather menu, you can just always press F for feather. We open the mask and then I'm gonna animate the mask path. Now again, there are easier ways in the new After Effects, but I just want to make sure that even if you have an older After Effects, this works. We can double click on the mask path, hold shift, and then move it up. Now, if we play it, we have this animation, which goes way too quick. You can select the keyframes, go to keyframe assistant, easy ease, and then we can also move it out a bit. So it goes a bit more smooth. I think it even goes a bit slower, something like this. Now the glow disappears a bit too early. So what I would do is maybe press U to see the keyframes, zoom in a bit, and then move these keyframes over a bit, or maybe make it a bit longer, the animation anyway. Go back to our composition and look at that animation. And then if you make some minor adjustments, it will look like this. Don't forget to subscribe to see more of these videos. And of course, don't forget to leave a comment to let me know what you want to see next. Then like always, I thank you for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye.